We often hear that dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, long before people. But what does the Bible say about them today on Creation Magazine Live? Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. I'm Matt Bondi. And I'm Richard Vangrad. Most of us have probably read a line in a children's book that says something like, millions of years ago, dinosaurs roamed the earth. Now, dinosaurs are most commonly associated with a history that involves eons of time. But what if that history is wrong? Yeah, well, the biblical age of the earth was our topic last week. Uh, so if you missed that and have questions about when God created, have a look at last week's show. Yeah, and if you didn't PVR it, it's now online at creation.com slash CML 8-04. Okay, so the history that the Bible records reveals that God created everything in six days, approximately 6,000 years ago. And everything? Well, that would include dinosaurs, wouldn't it? Well, yes, it would. Since dinosaurs are such a popular topic, it's important to understand them in the light of Scripture. And today, we'll explore some common questions about dinosaurs like, why aren't dinosaurs mentioned in the Bible? And did they all die out in Noah's flood? What do the fossils tell us about them? And has anyone ever seen a live dinosaur? Yeah. We've all heard the story that dinosaurs evolved millions of years ago and went extinct long before there were any people. Uh, it's a common theme in schools, museums, movies. Uh, now, we know dinosaurs must have been on the earth at some point because there are dinosaur fossils all over the world. Yes. But which history best explains dinosaur fossils? The millions of years history or the biblical history? Yeah, and since we're Christians, we're going to start with the Bible. Hey, there's a novel idea. <laughs> yeah. Genesis 1, right there in uh, verse 24. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and it was so. Now, since dinosaurs were land animals, God must have created them on day six of creation week. And there are other creatures associated with dinosaurs like pterosaurs and plesiosaurs. They would have been created on day five when the sea creatures and flying creatures were created about 6,000 years ago. Now, that's still a very long time ago, but it seems recent when compared with the millions of years history that we hear all over the place. Yeah, that's right. Now, in previous episodes, we summarized the biblical reasons why trying to blend the millions of years history into Scripture undermines the gospel. Yes. Now, in other words, by accepting the interpretation that because, and that's what it is, an interpretation, that the fossil record was slowly built up over millions of years, that would place millions of years of death, because fossils are dead things, before sin. And that, that's backwards. Biblically, death came as a result of sin, not before it. Death before sin undermines the gospel. And we kicked off season eight focusing on that vital topic. The millions of years history is actually radically different from biblical history. Uh, but for those like children growing up in the church, for example, who don't yet understand that the nature of the origins debate is really a war between two histories, well, they're going to have some questions about dinosaurs and which history they best fit into. Yes. Uh, and this provides an opportunity for parents and church leaders to step up to the plate with biblical answers. Yeah, and that didn't happen for uh, author Tom Holland. Mm -hmm. He writes, First there were dinosaurs. I vividly remember my shock when, at Sunday school one day, I opened a children's Bible and found an illustration on its first page of Adam and Eve with the brachiosaur. Six years old I may have been, but of one thing, to my regret, I was rock-solid certain. No human being had ever seen a sauropod. A faint shadow of doubt for the first time had been brought to darken my Christian faith. <laughs> you see, even as a child, he realized the two timelines couldn't both be true. Right. Uh, and apparently no one explained or showed him evidences to support biblical history. And of course, that affected his faith. Yeah, you know, on the other hand, the solution for some Bible-believing Christians was to say that dinosaurs never existed. <laughs> All the fossils are a massive hoax because they're not mentioned in Scripture. <laughs> or are they? <laughs> well, the word dinosaur means terrible or terrifying lizard, and it was first used by Sir Richard Owen in 1841. Uh, but the Bible was translated into English hundreds of years before that. Uh, the King James Version was published in 1611, and others were er even earlier. Uh, so when the Bible was first translated into English, the word dinosaur didn't even exist. Right, yeah, but there are creatures in the Bible that match the description of what we now call dinosaurs. 
In Job 40, 15 to 19, for example, God says, Behold now behemoth, which I made as I made you. He eats grass like an ox. Behold his strength in his loins and his power in the muscles of his belly. He makes his tail stiff like a cedar, a large tail. The sinews of his thighs are knit together. His bones are tubes of bronze. His limbs are bars of iron. He's first of the works of God. Now this clearly refers to uh, a creature that God created, not something mythical or symbolic. Yeah. Also, Job must have been familiar with this behemoth, or he wouldn't have recognized it as an example of God's creative power, which is the whole point that God is making there. Yeah. You know, commentators sometimes suggest behemoth was an elephant or a hippopotamus, uh, but the description includes a, a tail stiff like a cedar. <laughs> you can see from these images, neither an elephant nor a hippopotamus' tail looks like a cedar tree. Uh, but the tail of a sauropod or a bronchosaurus, he does fit the description. Uh, and another example is Leviathan in Job 41. Here God describes a large semi-aquatic creature with thick armor. And Job uh, 41, 19 to 20 reads, Out of his mouth go flaming torches, sparks of fire leap forth. Out of his nostrils come forth smoke. Wow, that, that sounds like a dragon <laughs> though, doesn't it? Well, funny you should mention that. Uh, dragon is another word found in the Bible. Yeah, but aren't dragons just mythological creatures? We'll explore more about dragons after the break. When you consider the 206 bones in your body, a humble toe bone does not seem that significant. But in July 2001, Time magazine ran a cover story where a single toe bone was the star attraction. The article featured a recent fossil discovery from Ethiopia, which allegedly showed how mankind's ape-like ancestors first stood up on two legs. Readers were told, meet your newfound ancestor, a chimp-like forest creature that stood up and walked 5.8 million years ago. Remarkably, however, they based their claim that this creature walked upright and was supposedly our ancestor on the shape of a single toe bone. What's more, they found the toe bone over 16 kilometres from the rest of the fossil material used in the reconstruction. The article was titled, One Giant Step for Mankind, but maybe it should have been One Giant Leap in Speculation. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Welcome back. Today we're talking about dinosaurs. Yes. The word dragon in the Bible often refers to actual creatures. Uh, for example, in Psalm 91.3, it says, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon. Dragon. Shalt thou trample under feet. Yeah. Or Deuteronomy 32.33, their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. And dragons are also featured in legends from cultures around the world one account from England in 1405 says, Close to the town of Burrs near Sudbury, there has lately appeared to the great hurt of the countryside a dragon, vast in body with a crested head, teeth like a saw, there's an interesting description, and a tail extending to enormous length. Having slaughtered the shepherd of a flock, it devoured many sheep. Now, other legends include Gilgamesh slaying a giant reptile-like creature named Kumbaba, the Anglo-Saxon poem about Beowulf killing a monster named Grendel, St. George and the Dragon, and numerous legends from Native Americans and many others around the world. Yeah, we also find dragons in Chinese culture. Yes. Uh, in traditional Chinese script, the character for dragon includes a representation of the spine and a tail. And the Chinese character for dinosaur actually includes the symbol for dragon. Huh. Uh, and have a look at the, the Chinese zodiac, which includes 11 recognizable creatures, like a, a tiger, a pig, etc., uh, and also a dragon. Yeah, it seems a little odd to include just one <laughs> mythical creature, doesn't it? Yeah, the, the only way this makes sense is if dragons were real. Right. Uh, with all the dragon legends all over the world, it makes sense that they were based on real creatures. Could they have been dinosaurs? Well, paleontology reveals that descriptions of dragons in, in those legends closely match what we would call dinosaurs. Right. Uh, before the word dinosaur was invented, some of the first dinosaur fossils were actually identified and labeled as dragons, as if dragon was something that people recognized as real, not mythical. You know, in 2003, a dinosaur was found that was labeled Dracorex hargwartsia. How's that for a mouthful? <laughs> because it looks so much like the typical image of a dragon. Signs at the exhibit in Indianapolis read things like, it's a new type of dinosaur that looks like a dragon. And is it a dragon or a dinosaur? Well, 
What's the answer? The answer is yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, and some of the artwork found around the world closely matches how paleontologists envision certain dinosaurs would have looked based on fossil reconstructions. One example is a carving on a temple in Angkor, Cambodia, which includes depictions of several recognizable creatures like a monkey and a water buffalo. And uh, I was there a few years ago and took these pictures. Here's one that looks a lot like a stegosaur. But this temple was built around 800 years ago. So the artwork was, was created long before dinosaur fossils were identified and put together in museums. If dinosaurs lived millions of years before man, how did the carver here know what a stegosaur looked like before the days of paleontology? Here's a petroglyph, a carving in Utah done by the Anasazi people sometime before 1200 AD. Now, petroglyph expert Fran Barnes wrote a description of it saying it bears a startling resemblance to a dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> well, no kidding. <laughs> but how did they carve that? I mean, did they watch Jurassic Park or copy it out of a dinosaur book? <laughs> yeah, don't think so. In 1496, Bishop Richard Bell died and was buried in the floor of Carlisle Cathedral in the UK. Now, on top of his tomb are brass engravings of different animals. You can see a dog, a fish, a bird, and wait, that looks like two sauropod dinosaurs, doesn't it? So, were the dinosaurs roaming England in the late uh, 1400s? Well, what logical conclusions can we draw from these carvings, right? Well, it's logical to think that uh, some dinosaurs may still have been living uh, and people were familiar with them, or maybe they had recently gone extinct and these artists were working from their memories. Okay, yeah, that's logical. Either way, they didn't die out millions of years right. ago. Yeah. These things support biblical history, not the millions of years. Now, a similar image can be made using this cylinder seal from ancient Mesopotamia. These were used to make impressions on clay tablets, and this one creates an image that looks very similar to the engravings in Carlisle Cathedral. Hmm. Wow, okay, so that, now that's two different artists in different parts of the world creating very similar images yeah. thousands of years apart. Yeah, I and mean, what's more logical? That they both dreamed up the same thing <laughs> or that they actually saw dinosaurs in action? Okay, maybe we need to slow down here. <laughs> okay, let's just review a little bit. Okay. okay, we can deduce from the history in Scripture that dinosaurs were created about 6,000 years ago. Uh, they're mentioned in the Bible, and there's evidence that people have seen dinosaurs as recently as a few hundred years ago. Yeah. I mean, that's radically different from the standard millions of years story that we're, we normally hear. Yeah. yeah, I mean, don't you just love it when there's evidence that supports the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> hey, as we all say, uh, Christianity is an evidence-based faith. Right? It is, yeah. And after the break, we'll look at some fossil evidence that shows dinosaurs are not millions of years old. Stick around. The vigorous promotion of evolution as established fact is causing many Christians to question the biblical creation account. And some non-Christians won't consider Christianity because they believe the Bible has been disproved by science. That's where Creation Magazine comes in. Creation Magazine is a family-friendly publication packed with cutting-edge science that supports the Bible, presented in an easy-to-understand format by some of the leading experts in their fields of study. Visit creation.com to subscribe today. We've been talking about dinosaurs. How old are they really? Now, since none of us today were around to actually see dinosaurs live, most of what we know about them has to be deduced from their fossils, which almost always gets filtered through the millions of years' history. Yeah, evolutionists interpret the fossil record within a framework of deep time. Yes. Uh, with many layers of rock being laid down slowly over millions of years. And the fossils in the upper layers are supposedly creatures that evolved from so-called simpler creatures in the lower layers. Right. Creationists, on the other hand, uh, understand that most fossils are a record of a mass burial in Noah's flood, which would mean that the fossils are thousands, not millions of years old and can't be used as evidence for evolution. Right. Now, two weeks ago in episode three, we saw evidence that layers of rock, even, even really thin ones, can form very quickly. A global flood is a superior explanation for the fossil record. The evolutionist's interpretation of the fossil record has led them to conclude that there was an age of dinosaurs from right. approximately uh, 230 million to 65 million years ago. Uh, at that point, they say dinosaurs went extinct because their fossils disappear in the upper layers. But, you know, not everything that lives and dies becomes a fossil. Right, yeah. A great example of this is a fish called the coelacanth, a really ugly fish. Uh, at one time, evolutionists thought that the coelacanth used its lobed fins to crawl along the ocean floor, suggesting that it must have evolved into land creatures. 
It was also thought to have gone extinct with the dinosaurs because the fossils don't appear in those upper layers. But surprise, a living coelacanth was found in 1938. <laughs> Oops. And more have been found since then. Uh, they're not only alive, their fins have nothing to do with walking. <laughs> no. Also, they have apparently uh, haven't changed in the last 360 million years, according to evolutionary dates. So, uh, you know, where's the evolution? Yeah, yeah where's the evolution? Uh, there are many out-of-sequence fossils. For example, evolutionists once taught that only small, like shrew-like little mammals could have been living at the time of the dinosaurs. Yet there are over 400 species of mammals found in the dinosaur strata, like, like beavers and flying squirrels. Here's a mammal that was found with the fossilized remains of a small dinosaur in its stomach. <laughs> mammals eating dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's not the image we normally see in movies and museum exhibits. No, it's not. <laughs> and often we hear of uh, evolutionists who claim that dinosaurs evolved into birds. Yet in addition to fossils of mammals found alongside dinosaur fossils, several types of modern bird fossils have been found, like parrots, ducks, and owls. Yeah, now of course Noah's Flood explains why fossils of dinosaurs and mammals and birds are found in the same layers. We would expect that sort of thing. Rapid burial is needed for fossilization to occur. Otherwise, dead things are, are scavenged or just rot. Yeah, and evolutionists often suggest that uh, various fossil creatures were buried quickly in some kind of local flood. Yeah. But of course, they don't want to admit that it was a global flood. Not global flood, no. <laughs> no. You see, the Bible's history, which includes a global flood, provides the best framework for understanding the dinosaur fossils. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and there are some very dramatic examples that dinosaurs did not die out millions of years ago. Beginning in 1993, Dr. Mary Schweitzer found red blood cells in a dinosaur bone. This is from a T-Rex here. Since that time, dozens of discoveries of soft tissue have been found in dinosaur bones. Yeah, blood vessels, uh, dinosaur proteins, collagen, and even dinosaur DNA has been discovered. All right, Jurassic Park, here we come, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's been estimated that DNA could potentially last a maximum of 6.8 million years. 6.8. Yeah, 6.8. Yeah. And that's if it was kept frozen at minus 5 degrees Celsius. Yeah. But, of course, none of these fossils were frozen when they were dug up. <laughs> no. So here again, dinosaurs did not die out millions of years ago. Right, yeah. Let's add just one more thing. Okay. Carbon-14 has also right. been found in dinosaur bones. It shouldn't be there if the bones are really millions of years old. Yeah, that's right. You see, carbon-14 has a half-life of only 5,730 years, meaning that there should be no detectable C-14 in anything that's older than about 100,000 years. Right. So once again... Science supports biblical history, not millions of years. Yeah, now Noah's Flood explains the, the massive number of recently buried dinosaurs worldwide. But clearly, some dinosaurs survived the flood, as we saw earlier. Were dinosaurs on Noah's Ark? We'll explore that one next. Abraham's life left a legacy in many different ways, but have you ever stopped to consider the legacy of his Y chromosome? The Y chromosome is unique to men. Fathers pass it on to their sons. So according to the Bible, Abraham would have passed it on to Isaac, then to Jacob, whose descendants gave rise to the Jewish nation. Abraham also passed his Y chromosome to Ishmael, through whom Arab nations have come. A recent study of Y chromosomes in Jewish and Arab men strongly supports the biblical account that they are all descended from one man. The results, published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences USA, revealed remarkable similarity between the Y chromosomes of Jewish and Arab male populations. The results prompted one of the researchers to say, Jews and Arabs are all really children of Abraham. I'm not surprised. Are you? To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Our subject this week is dinosaurs. And one of the big questions that often come up is, were dinosaurs on Noah's Ark? Well, they must have been, uh, since Job and others since biblical times have seen dinosaurs. Uh, Genesis 6.17 reads, for behold, I will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life under heaven. And in verse 19, And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. So living things here refers to animals that breathe air, uh, which would, of course, include dinosaurs. But how could they possibly fit? Yeah, yeah. In episode three, we talked about how huge the ark really was. It had the holding capacity of over 500 railroad stock cars. 
Now, not all dinosaurs are huge. Some are as small as a, as a chicken. Now, remember the one that was found in the belly of that mammal? But what about the big ones? <laughs> well, even the biggest ones started out as eggs, and the largest was no bigger than a football. And research into dinosaur bones shows many of them went through a growth spurt, unlike most reptiles. Uh, this graph shows the growth pattern of an apatosaurus. At about age five, it would weigh about a ton, but during its growth spurt, Apatosaurus would grow by over five tons a year, wow. leveling off around <laughs> age 12 or 13. So all Noah needed on the ark was a couple of juveniles that hadn't started their growth spurt yet. So in other words, you know, you don't bring grandma and grandpa, bring the junior hires. Yes, right. Yeah. But how many dinosaurs? Noah took pairs of each created kind, not individual species. Instead of more than 600 or so dinosaur species, it's estimated that there were only about 50 or so created kinds. But let's back up a bit and think about another question about dinosaur behavior. If dinosaurs and people were both created on day six, would dinosaurs in the Garden of Eden have eaten Adam and Eve? <laughs> right. Now remember, Tom Holland, the author there, had a hard time with that idea as a child, blending the two together, because he'd only been given the millions of years story. Well, once again, the Bible gives us the answer. Uh, Genesis 1, 29 to 30 reads, And God said, Behold, I have given you, referring to Adam and Eve here, every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. Okay, so in other words, uh, there was no meat eating, uh, not for people or animals. Right. Uh, so the original kinds that became today's carnivores, like uh, lions and tigers you know, and even T-Rex, well, they initially ate plants. Yeah, and in our Creation Answers book, there are several possibilities suggested for how some animals were changed to include defense and attack structures after the creation was cursed. But even some carnivores today can thrive on a vegetarian diet. In Creation Magazine, over, over the years, there have been two articles about vegetarian lions. Back in 2000, there was the lion that wouldn't eat meat. Then in 2007, Leah, the spaghetti lioness, about a <laughs> lion who was raised on Italian pasta. <laughs> and both of those articles are now online at creation.com. Yeah, pass the Parmesan. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, now God gave man permission to eat meat only after the flood. Yes. But what about the animals? Well, Dr. Jonathan Sarfati writes... When Cain was enraged that God rejected his sacrifice, God counseled him that sin is crouching at the door. Hmm. That's Genesis 4, 7. God pictures sin as crouching, but this, uh, this means ready to spring forth. The same imagery is used in Genesis 49, 9. He crouched as a lion. Okay, so this gives us a hint that animal predation, a predator-prey relationship, started before the flood. Yeah, and the fossil record, again, most of which was produced at the time of the flood, includes a lot of evidence that animals were attacking one another. Uh, here's Sue the T-Rex, one of the largest, most complete T-Rexes ever found. She's got the tooth of another T-Rex embedded in her rib cage. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, God has promised a time when there will be, again, no uh, death or bloodshed like it was yes. before Adam's sin. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah 11:7 gives us a picture of what a restored, very good world would look like. It says, the cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. There you go. So maybe they'll be eating spaghetti again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we have one last question to explore, and that is, where are they now? We'll talk about dinosaur extinction after the break. Refuting evolution is a powerful, concise summary that explains where the common evidences used to promote evolution in textbooks are wrong while at the same time showing how creation is better supported by scientific observations. It will stimulate much discussion and help students and teachers think more critically about the creation-evolution debate, particularly the often overlooked differences between operational and historical science and how they relate to the topic of origins. Order your copy today at creation.com. And we've been exploring some common questions people have about dinosaurs. Let's recap. Are there dinosaurs in the Bible? Yes. Were they on Noah's Ark? Yes. Have people seen dinosaurs? Yes. Are they millions of years old? No. Okay. <laughs> but where are they now? Of course, yeah. the vast majority of dinosaurs were wiped out in Noah's flood, uh, except right. the ones on the Ark. Uh, but there are dinosaur fossils all over the world, often found in graveyards, with several uh, dinosaurs buried together. 
Now, many of these are well preserved with no evidence of scavenging from other animals after they died. This indicates that rapid burial, and considering you know, the size and the number of dinosaur fossils found, we're talking about a lot of sediment, which means a lot of water. Yeah. <laughs> dinosaur fossils, as well as others, are often found in the dead dinosaur posture, with the head back, tail extended, hind limbs bent. Paleontologists have explored several possible explanations, including tendons drying out or getting dragged into that position by moving water after they died. But the explanation that best fits is muscle spasms from death throes as the animal was being asphyxiated or drowned. Fossils in this position indicate fast underwater burial. Global flood, maybe? <laughs> okay, what about the dinosaurs that survived the flood? Yeah. Well, we've seen evidence that dinosaurs were around up until a few hundred years ago, uh, and there have been stories, even more recent sightings, you know, uh, within the last century. Uh, but there's been no hard evidence of dinosaurs or even reported sightings for decades now. So as far as we can tell, dinosaurs are extinct now. So what happened? What happened? Yeah, evolutionists have many theories, like mammals eating their eggs or loss of vegetation. But the most popular one is the asteroid impact theory. Mm -hmm. This suggests that a massive asteroid hit the Earth near the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico about 66.4 million years ago. Dust in the atmosphere then caused a nuclear winter that wiped out the dinosaurs. But not the mammals and birds. N no, apparently not. <laughs> This idea is based on the worldwide layer of clay discovered around 1980 containing a relatively high amount of iridium thought to have come from meteorites, from, from the impact. But the iridium layer isn't as clearly defined as originally thought and could be produced by massive volcanism through volcanoes. Uh, and yes, several other uh, light-sensitive uh, species obviously did survive. Right. Uh, but even with a deep-time interpretation of the fossil record, the extinction really wasn't that sudden. That's right, yeah. There are challenges to explaining dinosaur extinction in a deep time scenario. But how do biblical creationists explain it? Okay, well, there are several possibilities. Uh, there's climate change. Uh, there was an ice age right after the flood. Right. Uh, less vegetation after the flood may have uh, made it harder uh, for them to find enough food. And, and of course, hunting. Yeah, hunting dinosaurs to extinction. That's not usually considered. Yeah, well, remember those <laughs> legends about uh, St. George and Beowulf? Uh, they were considered heroes for killing the dragon. Uh, you know, that was, the dragon was considered a threat, right? So history has shown that people have been able to hunt down some very large creatures, including whales. Yes, a lot of factors can lead to the extinction of any species, like genetic drift, change in habitat, disease, drought, parasites. There's already lots of reasons that animals go extinct today. We don't really need to come up with a new one for dinosaurs. Yeah, that's right. So rather than being a stumbling block to faith, dinosaurs fit with biblical history far better than the millions of years history. And because of that, they can actually be a great topic for evangelism. Join us next week when we talk about biology and the Bible. And remember, Christianity is an evidence-based faith. And science supports scripture. <laughs>